Well, uh, Talo Oil has kick-started oil production from its $1 billion Jubilee Southeast subsea project offshore Ghana. The company has confirmed the development along with its partners, US-based Cosmos Energy, state-owned Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, South Africa's Petro SA, and privately-owned Jubilee Oil Holdings. Now, this will help sustain uh, gross Jubilee production uh, over 100,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Here's more in this report. Talo Oil, in its trading statement, maintained that the Jubilee Southeast project, which is expected to start soon, will help turn its fortunes in the coming months. This is because the new wells that are coming on board will also help increase the daily production from the Jubilee field to more than 100,000 barrels a day before the end of this year. Talo Oil now pegs average daily production on the Jubilee field at around 28,000 barrels, but is projecting significant increase in the coming months. Um, as you are aware, we have and our partners uh, have been invested in Jubilee since 2007 and are proud to call ourselves the operator of this wonderful field. Over the years, Jubilee and its partners have invested over $17 billion in the Jubilee field, and that's de delivered value not just to us, but most prominently to the nation of Ghana uh, in the form of uh, taxes, royalties, and oil entitlements, we estimate that value that is yielded to the country from the de development of the Jubilee field and its production to exceed $6 billion. The oil exploration giant disclosed that these developments will commence before the end of this year with three producers and one water injector. Talu has also assured that together with its partners, they will be embarking on more drilling in the Jubilee area, adding that they have identified more drilling areas. One of the financial side, Talo Oil numbers also showed that it is indeed on that recovery path in terms of profits and revenue, as it has also taken steps to deal with recent debts on its books. Well, we've got a reaction from energy strategist and CEO of Eureka and energy consultancy firm, Dr. Yusuf Suleimana, who describes this development as a win-win for both Ghana and Talo Oil. Talo assets in Ghana have been their cash cow, and they haven't uh, uh, shy away from that. If you look at the kind of investment that they are putting into Ghana fields, and that's a very good thing for the nation Ghana. I mean, in the era where we have capital discipline <coughs> and seeing in the oil and gas industry, and a player is too ready to, I mean, inject uh, some substantial amount, say a billion dollar within a decade, into your fields. I think that's, that's crucial and that's commendable. Uh, but that's a win-win situation. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, Ghana assets have been Talos cash cow. If you look at the, the other asset that Talo holds in other jurisdictions, Ghana has been their lead asset. And so it's only, it's, 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 it's only normal and crucial that they, I mean they, they are deliberate in whatever investment that they are doing in Ghana. Yeah. So, and if you look at over the years, a lot of things confronted uh, Talo in a way that that has impeded their ability to ramp up their production. Um, what comes to mind, uh, is the gas handling issues, if you probably remember. And in the upstream business, if you're unable to handle the gas, it impacts your ability to churn out more oil, especially if you have the reservoir that is associated, that there's a gas and oil mixed together. And I think most of our fields that Talo handles, they are, some of them are associated. And so that impacted them so much. So if they are to shut down and and the plan is to improve the gas recovery capability to minimize flaring. I think that's the way to go. And also the fact that, I mean, the plan to maintain the production plateau of about 100,000 in gross production within the period, that's also very commendable. And, and I think it's only, it's, 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 it's only good that, I mean, uh, we have such a partner to partner with Ghana to champion our production portfolio. Well, we had uh, Dr. Suleiman speak there about gas flaring. Well, Talo says it's close to securing an agreement with the government on a development plan for the 10 fields to enhance gas handling and reduce flaring. Uh, he's been reacting to that too. Take a listen. I think what is also crucial is the fact that in terms of this gas handling capability, 
Uh, remember, we have climate change that is hovering around, and flooding is something that uh, climate activists or, or donors who are interested in investing in oil and gas will not have it easy to do. And so, if tell us to go out to capital market, they will have to look at their their carbon footprint, what plans they have in place. So all this is in a way to support their ability to source for funds in a way that if they go to capital market, um, they may ask them, what are your carbon capture or what are your carbon you know, reduction strategies? And reducing flaring is one in the upstream business is key, you know, especially in this era where we have competing investment in the world of hydrocarbon and uh, that of renewables. Yes, hydrocarbon will come to stay, uh, but the only challenge is sourcing capital. Um, um, you, will, you will be confronted with questions such as your, 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 your carbon sinking techniques. And minimizing flaring to the atmosphere is, is one. I mean, having strategies to minimize flaring to the atmosphere is, one, is, one, is, is key you know, uh, to your business survival in this afternoon business in, at this moment point in time, at this point in time. So yes, if the shutdown is to improve their gas handling capability, that's an excellent way to go.